Okay, so I just wanted to re-film what I'm doing with talking so that you can see how I wash my uh, my textiles to get them to get either them clean because they've um, you know are so old or they're dirty or there's stains in them or whatever. This is what I do not do with my um, textiles. If you want to do it, that's up to you. This is what I do not do. This is a washcloth. I do not do this. Ever, 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 ever do that. Because what that does is it tears and it rips the fabric and the textile and it will cause holes. It will stress out seams. You don't want to do that. So this is what I do. Again, you take um, the fabric, you know, keeping it close to the water so it like floats, like floats, oh Lord, so that it floats. And then you pick it up the whole thing like you're holding a baby's head, you know, cause you don't want a baby's head to flop. And then I just squeeze the water out and then you bring it over here to the, the rinse side. And again, you put it in the water so it doesn't hang uh, yes, that was already there. Don't panic. I didn't do that. And you open it up that way so that it does rinse. Okay. Um, here's another one. And be very careful, especially if all of your sleeves or apron ties have kind of all managed to... Oh, hello. You are not welcome here. Um, to get a hold of each other, really gently disentangle everything. And again, put it in a ball and just gently squeeze. I don't have any strength in my hand, so that's a gentle squeeze is about all I can get. And then bring it over here and you saw what I did, which is what I try not to do. And I'm talking, so I'm not paying attention is you want to put the whole ball in the water and then um, shush it around so that it can be rinsed. And then here's another one. Ah. And if you have problems, like if they're really tangled up, um, like if they're really tangled up, put the major part that you're working on to the side. And then like this one. Okay, yeah, this one's down here. Uh -huh. You don't want to pull because that again will put, especially on this one, see how this one has, um, not sure what that's called. I think that's called faggoting. I'm not sure. But if I were to have pulled that, that would have ripped that and the fabric itself. So again, and then squeeze and then transfer it over here, lay it in the water. I don't know what I'm going to do. That is a icky stain. Hopefully when it dries, it will. I like this because they kind of look like gossamer wings of fairies floating around in water. <laughs> How fanciful. And then over here again. And that. And very gently. You don't want to rip or, you know, be really rough with these. These ladies are super old. They're over 100. You wouldn't be super, super obnoxious and aggressive with a 100 year old granny so come on get out of there yep. All right. okay so that is how i do that whether outside in a vintage wash tub or inside in my sink oh my gosh people my back is killing me ah oh, yet another reason that i'm happy i live now <laughs> Um, yeah, bending over this all day doing this laundry, I've um, washed and rinsed three times to get everything as white as possible. And now they're on their final rinse. I'm just going to let them sit in there for a few minutes. And I forgot to mention one thing because my hands are killing me, which brought to my mind uh, the way in which men and women back in the olden days wring the water out of their clothing. They had what was called a mangler. And of course I have one, but you get three guesses as to where it is and the first two don't count. That's right, it's in storage. So I will put a, an image of one probably right here on the screen. 
so that you could see what I'm talking about. And it was how um, they got the excess water out of the clothes that would make the clothing lighter so that when it hung on the line, it wouldn't hurt the seams, tear out the seams, and just made drying easier and drying time shorter. I believe my mom used one when she was young. I can't remember. Anyway, the mingler was wonderful for getting excess liquid out of the laundry. And I'm going to empty this side over here and use it to help me get the water out of the textiles without wringing them out like I showed you in the in the previous video with the washcloth. How, you know, you usually wring something out that's not really what you want to do with antique or vintage textiles because it can put pressure on the seams and the fabric itself. So I'm going to use this side to help me get that out. And what I do is I try and squish the most of the fabric I can out and then I press against the side. Uh, don't play, I don't drop my phone. Against the side really hard to get more of it out. And then I will take it over and put it on um, the towels over there and roll it up and squish it out even further. All right, see you in the next video, folks. Tulu. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I dry or really wring out my antique and vintage clothing. This is a very, um, the safest way I know how to do it, especially if they are delicate or even if they're not. Uh, in the past, I've put like the really sturdy cottons um, that like not even a bulldozer could hurt in the um, spin cycle in my washing machine, but I don't like to do that obviously to my delicate things. And so what I do is after rinsing them and uh, like Vetro Clean or another very um, uh, non-traumatizing detergent, almost said deodorant, <laughs> detergent, I rinse them out really well. And then um, every time you're washing them and rinsing them, always treat your clothing or um, textile like a baby. You know, um, pretend like the baby's head is the ball of textile that you have in the water. Don't ever let it hang. Always scoop it up and support it from the bottom because that way it won't stress the um, textile out or cause the seams to tear or put any str uh, stressor. That would be stress and pressure on the seams. So then what I do is I take a clean cotton towel Usually I do this inside, but for the videos that I'm doing today, I'm outside. Um, so take a nice clean cotton towel, or I've always uh, um, also used cotton comforters. Like when my boys were little, they had Transformer and Spider-Man comforters. And just lay those out, you know, as nicely and as delicately as you can because they're still heavy with the water. And then I just start rolling. Of course, if you have a yard that has a dog in it, make sure there's no, you know, landmines. And then what I do is just start rolling. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this on the stand. Hold on. Okay, so you're gonna start from one end to the other. It doesn't really matter. And then you're just going to roll this up pretty gently kind of smooth things out as you go. And if there are any bugs, you know, if you're doing this outside, if there are any bugs or debris that hopped onto your freshly cleaned textile, shoo them off because you just washed this and you don't want any new bits on it. So, then when you have it like this, it's nice and round and it, it's nicer, of course, than wringing your fabric out or your textile out, which will totally stress the fabrics and the, the fibers. But when you do this and you start just gently squeezing that water out, um, it has the fabric hasn't folded in on itself. It's got layers in between it. So to my way of thinking, and I've done this with a lot of my fabrics and they haven't shown any signs of distress or despair, it's not um, folded or 
for lack of a better word, crunched the fabrics. So just, um, you know, quarter it or half it over <laughs> so that you just continue to get all of that moisture out. And you will have a wet towel, but that's okay because new wet cotton towels can go in the dish in the dishwasher. Yeah, sure. I wash my towels in the dishwasher at my house. How about you? <laughs> And for really delicate clothing, what I do is just take them in and lay them on my bed. So this is nice and lovely and it's not really heavy right now, but still I don't want to put any stress on the delicate um, seams and fabric. And so what I will do is just fold it up like this. And again, if you ever want to pull on anything, pull on the towel that's underneath it. And then go like this and I'm gonna take it in my bedroom and lay it down on my bed to finish drying okay so I lied no actually I changed my mind is what I did um, hello it is hotter out warmer out here than it is in my house so this will dry faster out here in the natural air than it will inside in the air-conditioned air and I'm really pleased at how it turned out this one is silk. Um, it is a different kind of, it's not a silk taffeta. Silk taffetas, I would never, ever, ever um, put in a cleaning. Don't know what this is, this is sheer. Um, I don't know, but it worked really, really well. And the, like I said, the drying um, makes it so much easier. See, there hardly, there aren't any wrinkles. You know, like you would get if you ring, ring, ringed, ring, rung. If you squeezed and twisted the fabric up, um, there are no wrinkles. So that is how I uh, ring out my textiles. Especially, 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 especially if they are delicate. All right, there she is. Thinking she's from 1916. Oh, she's beautiful. Thank you, Lavender at Duckling Vintage. Oh. <sighs> okay, here are some of the, well, I think I got all the bodices and all of the corset covers out, laying on towels to be rolled up and, um, yeah, pat it dry, why not? Let's call it padded dry. So yes, one step closer, closer. <laughs> you can tell how tired I am. One step closer to drying them out and getting them up on that um, laundry, that laundry line, clothesline. <laughs> now we roll. All righty then. If you are watching this video, hopefully you saw the one before that where I went about uh, washing laundry as one would have done in the olden days. Um, but I want to show you what I actually used today <laughs> to do the laundry. Um, uh, and also show you some other things that ladies or gentlemen in the olden days would have used for laundry. So maybe I'll show you some of the stuff that they would have used to do the laundry. So we have laundry buckets where the, um, the laundry would have actually been washed and then rinsed. So here's a square one and sometimes they came in two and would have a stand for the uh, both of them. So you had your washing and then you had your rinsing or you would just have one. So, um, and the stand would just be for one and then you would wash it, remove them, fill the um, bucket up with uh, clean water and then you would rinse it. And then you had two different sizes. They came in all different sizes, but here are two other galvanized steel laundry buckets. And then of course the one that I used to wash my laundry in today. Um, let's see, then down here, so I used my hands to move the, 
the whites around and get them washed. But back then they would have had one of these. And I've got one that actually has a handle. Of course it is in storage. Several things that I would love to have here with me today are in storage. And don't panic, but that is very dirty. I do need to clean that up. But they would it was like a plunger, you know, like a toilet plunger. And they would have stuck that in here. I'm not gonna put it on the clean side because those are clean, but they would have Slushed. I wonder if I can do this because this is going to be drained anyway. So pretend that there's clothing in here and they would have, you know, moved those around like that. Not sure what it's called, but I'll find out and then I'll let you know. Hey, I wonder if it got cleaned out. Ew, no. Gonna have to do that separate. Sorry about that, grody pants, but it's the only one I have. So yes, this would have had a, hand, had a handle and they would have, in a sense, plunged the laundry to get it clean. And then another way they got stuff clean was a washboard. Now this one is a small one. I do have larger ones in storage, of course. Sometimes they were this galvanized steel, sometimes it was wood, and sometimes it was glass. And they would set this down in the bucket like this. You know, you had all the soapy water in here and then they would put the clothes in there. And then standing on this side, they would, um, sorry, this side, they would take the laundry and they would wring it on here. And this was, you know, this helped to get it clean, to help to get the clothing clean. National Washboard Company. Ooh ha! There you go. <laughs> I'm not sure what they, date that is. Um, probably could have run into the 20s and 30s, maybe sometimes 40s for people who didn't get uh, a new, new fangled washing machine. So those were used quite often. And then for soap, they would have used Felsnap, the PNG, and other laundry soaps. And what they did was they shaved this off into boiling water and got the soap, the water soapy. And then that, or they used a cheese grater or a soap grater. I don't know if there's a soap grater. Somebody out there, let me know. But they would have grated this, these bar soaps. Um, they either could have purchased them or they would have made them theirself, themselves. So that was the soap. Lye soap was used. Um, I used RetroClean and I used a wooden spoon to stir it up without the clothes in it. But yes, RetroClean does work wonders. One soak in its history. Tra la la. <laughs> I got, oh, and then the, there are these fun laundry baskets that are not laundry baskets, laundry bags that I have as well. And you guys aren't supposed to be here yet. So you're gonna go over there, shoe fly. Another laundry bag. And then to get water, oh wait, sorry, there's another laundry bag. This is, I'm sure, would have been, might have been an apron, I don't know, but I love it. This is vintage, not antique, but still, isn't that sweet? Love it, love it, love it. Then I got water into my tubs with a garden hose for the coal or for the rinsing. But then for the washing, because Retro Clean, the directions say dissolve three to four tablespoons into warm water. And because I don't have a warm water hose out in my backyard, I had to <laughs> make several trips with a plastic and a glass pitcher out here. Colton did help. Thank you, my son. It was awesome. But that is how I got my water out here. Now, back in the olden days, um, People would have heated their water outside over, you know, um, in a, on a stove or over a fire, or they would have heated it inside, you know, like if it was in winter, they would have heated their water inside on the stove or over the fireplace. So um, people always say, don't you wish you lived back then? And this right here is yet another reason why I like living now. I've got a washer and a dryer in my house. I don't have to heat my water. <laughs> So I think that's it. Oh, and then the towels are how I'm going to uh, get the water, ring out. I'm not gonna ring, because you don't ring. That is how I'm going to remove excess water from the laundry that um, I have in the rinse side of the tub over there. All right, until the next video, toodaloo.